we're going to be finishing up because now, okay, so we've got this autonomic nervous system, and our next topic is going to be moving us into our special senses, all right? So looking at what we have with this topic, one of the things that we've learned, we have our parasympathetic and sympathetic. Sympathetic, if you remember, prepares the body. Parasympathetic is supposed to calm it down. In some of the effects that we have mentioned, the effects for the organs, they have fibers from both systems. In other words, they'll be innervated by parasympathetic, sympathetic. And so, for example, we were talking about this dual to innovation, and we mentioned the pupils of the eye, okay? And the reason for that is because that's not anything that we're controlling at all, okay? It's going to control the amount of light. The next part that we move to is viscera that do not have dual innervation. So in some cases, we're going to find that the fiber is only from one division, sympathetic, all right? Now, the reason for that, when the sympathetic division kicks in and then things return back to normal, back to homeostasis, the sympathetic division can just stop firing. And that way, it goes back to not getting any of that information. So in some cases in the body, we're going to see that we're going to have just the one division. And for the most part, it's sympathetic. Because sympathetic is really making the body do something. If you think about it, it's making the heart beat faster. It's making the lungs take in more air, you know, increase your respiration rate, change the blood flow. Okay, so our sympathetic system, it, it, it works to maintain a tone, like we've mentioned several times, and one of the biggest areas of the body that it works on is our vessels, the blood vessels. Now, one of the reasons for this, for this constriction and dilation, that the sympathetic division can do, the body wants to control where the blood flow goes, okay? We have to make sure that it sends the proper amount of blood flow to our organs. And that's what the body will focus on. It can shift blood flow, which is pretty cool, okay? We kind of mentioned the dilation and constriction in, um, in relationship to frostbite. Like if it's really, really cold outside, it wants to move that warm blood flow to the core of the body, but all this other stuff out here for the extremities, it, the body's just like, well, I can do without that, okay? But I can't do without my viscera. And then if it's really, really hot outside, like I think it's supposed to be today, um, one of the things it'll do, it'll take that warm blood and push it away from the viscera. And so we start to sweat and the dilation and all of that sort of stuff carried on. So the blood vessels will have this innervation 
from the sympathetic division. And what it wants to do is make sure, first of all, that it diverts the blood to areas of the body that, that need it, but also to help control blood loss and blood flow in times of emergencies. So like if there's a severe accident and someone maybe has a really bad injury, they're bleeding, you know, pretty heavily from the injury, the body in the beginning, now remember, going to have to take measures to control it, but in the beginning, the body wants to try to feed all of it. But if the blood flow is not controlled, then we run into a whole different set of issues, okay? But under normal circumstances, this sympathetic division is really focusing on shifting blood flow to the areas of the body that need it. So our blood vessels are working hard to make sure that um, happens. So how does our central nervous system have control over <clears throat> these autonomic functions? Central nervous system, brain, spinal cord, okay? Several levels of this central nervous system are going to play a part in the autonomic function. Do you guys remember the cerebral cortex? What, what area was that? Like the higher order brain. Do what? The higher order. All right. Well, when we think about the cerebrum, we think about it being higher order thinking. Mm -hmm. When we say cortex, which portion? Isn't that the, like the, the layer above it? That outer, outer layer. So when we think of cortex, cortex is always referring to an outer layer. So when we look at the cerebrum, do you guys remember how it was like it, when you opened up the two halves of the brain, it was kind of like this overlapping coloration on it? That was trying to represent the cortex, which, of course, we know that the cerebrum is the area of higher order thinking. So, higher order thinking influences the autonomic nervous system. It doesn't control it, okay, but it does influence it. When we have anger, fear, anxiety, what are termed powerful emotions, they influence this autonomic system because they have a connection to other areas of the brain. So, for example, when you get anxious, what type of physical things happen to the body? Sweat. We might begin to sweat. Shake or shake. We might have some shaking, some nervousness. Can you think of? Heart rate goes up. Your heart rate will go up. Pressure Blood pressure will go up. That breathing rate will increase. So it wasn't a control over these autonomic functions, but what it did was influence it. So anytime we have that stress response, which is sort of the way they refer to it, the stress response, it affects this autonomic system. In the hypothalamus, which is going to, we're going to come back to that in the endocrine system, but do you guys remember the little W shape in the brain? This one is where it has a lot of control 
over the viscera because we're going to find in this area along with the midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata, we're going to find what are called control centers. We're going to find the cardiac control center. We're going to find the center for um, respiration. We're going to have other functions of the body, thirst, hunger. We're going to find other types of um, control centers. We're going to see it for eating, okay? Because one thing that we have to do as an organism to stay alive, we have to get our energy. So it'll help with wanting to get us to eat going to the bathroom. Once again, the eyes. You're going to find out the special senses, how cool that really is. <clears throat> and then our spinal cord. Our spinal cord is going to help with control of all these things that happen with the viscera because we're going to find defecation and victorician reflexes are going to be integrated in the spinal cord. Now, when we get to the section where we talk about that, the reason, all right, think about babies. Babies don't have control over the defecation and the micturition, but we do now, okay? That is because we have not only smooth muscle, that's involved in these reflexes and the um, effects that come out. We also have skeletal muscle involved. That's what we train. And that's what helps give us control over the defecation and the micturition. So we may get the reflex but as, you know, from babies and as we go through training and all this other stuff, we work to control it through our skeletal muscles. Drugs and the nervous system. Huge area of pharmacology. It's called neuropharmacology. Neuro nerves. Okay. And... This is what we use to study the effects of drugs on the nervous system. Since we have the two divisions, the sympathetic, the parasympathetic, medication that will work on the sympathetic division, if it enhances, meaning increase the sympathetic response, they're called sympathomimetics. I know, big word. They are most likely going to stimulate receptors or increase the release of norepinephrine. <coughs> Good example, cold medicines. When you take a cold medicine, what it does, dilates the bronchioles and the lungs and helps to constrict blood vessels in the nose so that hopefully your nose will stop running and that you'll stop coughing. That's a good example. If it suppresses this um, sympathetic division, they're called sympatholytics. These want to block receptors or inhibit the release of norepinephrine. Good example, some of our blood pressure medications. Some of our blood pressure medications are going to work to reduce high blood pressure and affect the heart muscle, well the heart function I should say, and the blood vessels.
to lower blood pressure. 